Would you like to make a 10k in a month as a developer? And no, I'm not talking about working for Google or Meta, moving to US and living in Silicon Valley. No, no, I'm talking about 10k in a month, uh, working from your home or from the beach somewhere, whatever suits your needs. I think I found a shortcut and I will tell you about that. So put a phone aside and listen. As you may know, I have my own apps in the App Store and they're generating about, let's say, 4K in a month. That's not bad for the start, but it is not close yet to this 10K goal. Uh, we will get here, but let's talk about indie apps first. So I would love to make 10K or more from my own apps in the App Store, but that's not the fastest way to get to the 10K in a month. The hardest milestone in indie app development is first 1000 in monthly recurring revenue. There are plenty of different statistics, but in average, 17% uh, of all the indie apps are getting to the 1K in monthly recurring revenue. So that's hard. If you are here, then getting to the 2.5K and 5K is relatively easy. And from my own experience, I see that getting over this 5K kind of hump is kind of hard. So I am personally currently bouncing in between three and five K in a month. And I know, I know how to get to the 10 K by indie app development uh, relatively quickly, but I don't really like that path because, so that means to go all in, in indie app development. And uh, I'm not ready to do that. I'm not in my twenties anymore. If I would be in my twenties, I know how to do that. So if you are in your twenties and so if you have app in the App Store, great. So push it to 1K. If you don't have it yet, I have a video about basically roadmap to from Appidea to the 5K. Check that video, start building, get to 1K, maybe 2K and move to the Thailand. I know you have endless money to kind of scale your business, build your apps and so on. Okay, part for those who are in 20s with endless possibilities is done, but what to do if you have responsibilities or you just don't want this 1k per month startup per month somewhere in the low cost country? I will say that end goal is still to get to this 10k in months from your indie applications, but in kind of more enjoyable way. To move there quicker, we will need at least two more revenue streams. That will make this journey just way more comfortable and enjoyable and faster. So the first revenue stream is indie apps. So if you don't have indie app yet, so probably this is a good time to start building, building it because many reasons, but generally you have endless uh, revenue potential. Basically there is no ceiling for revenue and yeah, you can work on your own projects. That's fun, believe me. <laughs> but anyways, that aside, so one revenue stream that is indie apps, another revenue stream that should be something like salary, you know, <laughs> sorry to say, but jobs are good because you're getting paycheck, but we need to switch a little bit kind of mindset because if this end goal is get to the revenue from the indie apps, then you should kind of think a little bit differently about your current or next job. So, story time about my job switches and what we could learn from that. So, in my last corporate job, I was head of products in software development company. That was interesting job with fancy business card and really, I didn't mind to work at that job, at the job, but I wanted something more. I will say I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to build my own products, work on my own hours, travel without asking for vacation, and yeah, preferable to build stuff for Apple platforms. So just starting to build mobile apps and publishing them in the App Store is not the fastest way to earn money. And I decided to switch careers. So basically I become iOS developer and I got paid to learn <laughs> how to code. Basically my day to day job become programming 
I become significantly better at programming and I started to learn quickly and yeah, that helped me to build my applications. So I will suggest you to keep your day job or freelance career, whatever you are doing now, but switch your mindset and yeah, do not plan, I don't know, do not look on this job as your kind of career and or your co-workers and boss like family. That is just a place where you are going to earn money to fund your indie app development project, let's say so. Yeah, because bills are, you have to pay them every month. I know, that sucks. <laughs> so as a freelance developer, you can earn at least 3000 in a month. And okay, you can push it to five, seven, maybe even 10. But if you are kind of making 10 in a month, it's already kind of really demanding job and unlikely that will be easy to switch to the indie app development. So let's stay conservative, let's say 4K in a month from freelance. So if we have, for example, 4K in a month from apps, 4K from freelance, it is already 8K in a month, not bad. Actually, you can survive even in New York on that money, right? And you can live comfortably in cheaper country and city, but uh, it's still not 10K. Yeah, 8K in a month makes 100K in a year. Good, not bad, but we are not on the 10K in a month yet. So we are 2K short and we can get those 2K somewhere else. That's third revenue stream. The third revenue stream that you need is digital products or services. Everyone who solved a few problems in life is sitting on knowledge and skills to launch a digital product. But hear me out. <laughs> I'm not saying you should become a course boy or should start to sell some kind of snake oil. There is a legit way to make a missing 2K in a month or more by helping others. I would say that most of the digital products which are based on some knowledge, skills and so on could be split in four kind of different categories. So the first one basically is like do yourself product. That could be some course, some notion templates, some, I don't know, another Swift UI boilerplate project. Basically you are selling like an information. So course, that's information, notion templates, that's also some kind of information template and so on. It's relatively um, easy to sell on autopilot, you know, you're just adding link somewhere in the bio and saying, okay, grab my, let's say, color grading lots to make my make your photos looking similar to mine. Not hard to scale, but it's really hard to sell because I don't know who really needs your, who really needs another kind of video course. There are, I don't know, you can buy them for 10 bucks on Udemy. You can find information for free. All those uh, boilerplate projects as well. If you have kind of big following, if you made, for example, 100k product and you will say okay this is template which i used for this 100k product take it copy it and you will make 100k as well and it costs only 10 bucks someone will buy <laughs> those products are hard to sell and i know that i can tell you because i i i had those products as well i had notion template i had video course and uh you are not really, really making big money because you have to sell a lot to make at least thousand in a in a month. For example, if you have ten bucks product, you need to make hundred sales in a month. That's that's not easy. Believe me, I tried that. <laughs> then there are done with you type products, which are paid communities, group coaching, cohort based trainings, and so on. You can kind of create community and do not spend all the day in it. You can basically how to get people in. You spend some amount of time in this community, but still you can kind of sell it a lot. Again, it's not easy to sell because Basically, those who are buying this product, how to do all the work, you are just kind of guiding them a little bit. So again, hard to sell in uh, big amounts, hard to sell for high price and so on. You can try that, but basically you will waste a lot of time. So what I would recommend as a digital product for those who are looking to make relatively easy money, I would say that is done with you kind of product or service that's basically one on one coaching when you help that person privately to achieve the goal, the outcome. 
I can give you examples. So I have in the App Accelerator community that started like, like a paid community. Those guys who, who got in first, they got for a relatively cheap price. It started like, I don't know, five bucks. But basically there was nothing, just community. And then we added courses, uh, all that stuff. And uh, price went up and it was uh, 50 bucks and 100 bucks and so on. Basically, because you, when you get in, then you kind of get in the course and then you get also community, which kind of helps you and motivates you to move forward. Now I switch it to the approach of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Basically, that is 1,000 in a year, but you are getting me as a support on building your indie applications. Basically, I'm kind of giving course you are getting community and also we are jumping on once a month, we are jumping on one on one call and basically I'm helping to move forward to this goal to make money from the app store. So if you are selling 1000 in a year product, price value is still here because it is not so expensive in a month. It's something like 83 bucks in a month. And basically you are getting one one on one call once in a month for that type of mentoring, that's not expensive. Also, you're getting all this course, community, all the stuff together, combine it. That's quite a good deal. And to make 2000 in a month, basically, you need two sales. You need two customers in a month. Is it doable? I think yes, for almost each and every business. And if you will add only two customers in a month, so at the end of the year, you will have how many? 24, so you will have... 24 101 calls in a month, still doable. You can handle that. That will not take so much time like, I don't know, another job. So I think this is a good way to go. And yeah, exactly what, what kind of product that could be. Yeah, in my case, basically what I did, I, I'm looking on what I did. I build in the apps. I scaled them to the 5K in a month. I kind of know how to do that and I can help others. Take a look on what kind of problems you solve it. I think that uh, this type of service is very kind of helpful. And uh, I don't know how many buyers are in product niche that you could create. Maybe you can do this trainings for job interviews. Maybe you can try help uh, learn programming faster and so on. The problem nowadays is that there is so many information in the internet, you can do endless research on your own. And it is really helpful if you have someone who can, who can sit with you one on one and tell you, okay, I have been where you are now. And I know how to get where you would like to be because I have been there and I am already kind of few steps ahead of that. So I can help you. If you can make, if you can build this type of product, that can easily bring a few thousand in a month. So, and then we start to combining. We have, let's say, two, three, four K from India application. We have three, five, six, whatever K from freelancing or consulting or day job and then adding few few thousands from the one on one coaching so that's basically is already 10k or more in a month relatively easy i would say yeah of course you are working a lot <laughs> yeah of course i didn't say that you will get that money kind of watching netflix and sleeping of course if you want to make 10k and more you have to work your butt off if you are not ready to do that, <laughs> probably this is not the right video to watch. You should take a look uh, on some video which suggests you to invest in some shitcoin, you know. Yeah, but that's doable. And yeah, I said there are four types of like this kind of coaching uh, info product. The number four is that's like service-based business. That's not really freelancing or job, but that could be also something like... Uh, third uh, revenue stream, digital product revenue stream. And this one is easiest to sell because with courses, it's not clear what you're really getting. Information, okay, information is around the internet already. With cohort-based trainings, easier a little bit to sell. Okay, we are kind of doing that together. You have peer support, again, good. One-on-one -on -one coaching, you already see the value, but result is still in your own hands. You basically your own responsibility to execute and kind of 
get to the result. But if you offer service like, okay, I will I will make you logo for your application or I will make landing page or I will write a copy for your app store description or again, product landing page. For all of those cases, you can easily measure the value which is provided. I'm not doing those service type kind of products, but if I will start, if I don't have following, if I will start, if I will think about digital product that I could build, I will look what kind of product I can make as a service. And there are different platforms where to do that. I'm currently using School. If you don't know what's that for my community and my courses, I will add link in description, check out the school games. There are nice tutorial how to start, how to build and so on. Not sponsored or something, just I assume you you will ask. And yeah, I think that is the fastest way to get to the 10K because everyone kind of dreaming this indie app developers dream. Oh, I would like to build an app and my goal is 10K in a month, likewise, but less fancy way is to have <laughs> your indie app in the app store, some digital product and freelance job and get to this 10K super fast, you know? And then when you are already comfortable, you can try to sit on those 10K and take a look, okay, I will try to grow my digital products or I will try to grow my indie apps. And then when they are start to growing and you are running out of the time, because yeah, it is not scalable really, then you're already looking what to drop from those three revenue streams. Maybe you don't like the, the digital product business. Okay, just drop it, stick with freelancing and your own apps. Or if you are not interested selling your time and you would like to work only on yourself, then just drop freelancing and stay with uh, digital products and uh, indie apps. And yeah, you definitely need another income stream, even if you are working in the very good tech job in and making the 10K in your salary. Money is not the only kind of important thing. I think uh, that security is important as well. And if you have multiple revenue streams, if you have digital products, your kind of consulting, your indie apps, actually you are totally fine if one of those will kind of go away. Because whatever can happen, your digital product business can go away. I don't know, you can be cancelled on the internet, you know, that happens all the time. Uh, your stable job can be cancelled as well. Happens all the time. I think nowadays no one should be convinced that there is no stable job. And in the apps, same thing. You never know. Uh, we, we are there. This chance that it will go away is not high because I don't know. Apple is around, will be around for a while, but you can be kicked out from the App Store for some dumb reason. You know, maybe I don't know. Big competitor will come in the market and your app will kind of start to tank, and yeah, your sales will go down. Possible. But if you have three different revenue streams, okay, at least two, you need two. If you have two revenue streams, if one of them will go away, you will still can move to the Thailand and live at the beach on low budget. Okay, that's it. Bye.